Changes brought to you by ANZ. We live in your world. People are being urged to put off any plans to venture to the far north as flooding threatens to get worse. Communities are cut off by road tonight and residents are being told to stay indoors. The heavy rain set to spread and already there's disruption further south with two flights diverted away from Auckland Airport. Jim will give us an idea of trouble spots shortly. First, let's look at the worst hit spots in Northland, Kyle and Kirikiri. Amy Kelly joins us from Waiotu. Amy. Wendy, we're standing on the front verge of a Waiotu man named Dave Leith. Now, he tells us what we see here is usually grassy green paddock as far as the eye can see. Clearly it's now mostly submerged, the cows have been moved to higher ground and there are areas like this all over Northland at the moment. It's why police are warning people not to travel north of Auckland for the next 24 hours. Raging torrents, gale force winds and ponds where there should be paddocks. This is why police are warning people to stay off the roads, advice some drivers ignored. The strong currents of this road-turned-river proving treacherous even for rescuers. In Kayo, the worst hit area, residents fled for higher ground while cattle were left stranded. For this farmer, still recovering from last year's floods, the damage is disastrous. For us, it was at least $250,000. Um, there'll be well over millions of dollars that's gone down the drain today. More than two months worth of rain has fallen in Northland in the last 36 hours, with more forecast for the next day and a half. Civil defence is on high alert. There's been a lot of road closures because of the rivers, the flooding going onto the roads, so many of the northeastern uh, far north communities have been cut off by closures of the, the state highway and other roads and quite a number of schools sent their, um, their pupils home early. As the weather begins to settle tonight, civil defence is calling for residents to remain vigilant as it prepares to open evacuation centres in Whangarei and Kaio. OK, Amy, besides safety, what else are police urging people to avoid travelling north? Well, the other reason they're warning is because any journey will be incredibly slow. There are several sections of State Highway that are cut off. When we were driving up from Auckland, uh, just north of Whangarei, we faced a detour of at least half an hour. And, of course, there are many more fallen trees, slips and surface flooding right the way up Northland's east coast. All right, thanks for the update, Amy. Amy Kelly reporting from Waiotu, north of Whangarei. Oh, Jim is here now to give us a clearer idea of where the storm is heading, Jim. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, everybody. Two things about the storm. Number one, it's coming out of a warm, dynamic Pacific Ocean. And secondly, it's moving very slowly. That means conveyor belt rain and severe gales squeezed under the north and the Marlborough Sounds between the low of the storm and the high over the south. Just look at the drenching that uh, the North and Auckland and Coromandel's had today. Now, there's the Coromandel, Firth of Thames, Auckland City. This is uh, Cor uh, uh, Northland. Now, look at this. The red uh, colours indicate the heaviest falls. We see some breaks in the cloud in Northland later in the day but the main band, band has moved into western parts of Northland. Uh, the heavy falls we expect to ease in Northland uh, tomorrow morning, but scattered falls will continue. Just by the way, uh, Kerry Kerry's had 180 millimetres, Kaio 197. The system is not moving quickly. We'll look at this again later on, but here's the centre of it all, and right through tomorrow it stalls around that Northland area and begins to weaken late tomorrow. But I'll be back with you later in the bulletin with a detailed look uh, at the forecasts in your particular regions. We'll see you then. Thanks, this One News update is brought to you by ANZ. We live in your world. Brought to you by the Kia Sorento R. Redefining the power of Kia. You would have noticed the weather's been hitting big in Northland. The high tide was half an hour ago, and that's what the Whangarei Fire Service are waiting for. So to get the very latest, I'm joined now by Mike Lister, the Whangarei Fire Service Area Commander. Mike, you're still above water? Yes, we are, Mark. We're um, right up here. It's raining pretty hard here at the moment, but... Um as I say, we're still um, 
but still uh, keeping their head above the water. Mike, seeing those dramatic pictures on the news tonight, you would think that you guys would be absolutely rushed off your feet. Yes, well, we expected it today too, but um, we all we started around about eight o'clock this morning, getting our uh, reoc together and getting our team together, and because um, we got um, just on 30 stations throughout Northland. Um, but it was um, it seems to be very strange that the calls didn't really come up. We I think over the whole Northland area we had about 30 to 35 calls for, for the period between eight o'clock and six o'clock tonight. Uh, look, that does seem pretty strange. Are they made a sterner stuff up there, Mike. Oh, we are, mate. We're pretty we're pretty <laughs> tough people up here. You know, very resilient. We uh, are getting quite used to this type of thing. Over recent years, or the last 10 years, I've been here. We've always had a weather bomb or something of the like, and um, I do believe the Northland people are reasonably resilient, and uh, so only unless they're really in trouble do they call the fire service. So what, they'd, they'd do it themselves? If there was something blocking the drive or doing whatever, they'd, they'd get out there? Yes, yeah, that's the you know, I mean, to say if a, if a branch comes down over a driveway or in front of their house or something like that, they'll just get a chainsaw out and get rid of it. So look, so you don't need any help up there. I'm sure there were there were people willing to, <laughs> to come up and lend a hand. I oh, know, no, no we um, you know, we, we do um, are there for the um, you know to to make people safer in the community, and um, we're there just for the for the call, and um, yeah, no, so uh, we've had a few rescues today, um, quite a few just storm-related events, such as you know trees on roofs, um, cars being stuck in drains and all that, but um, as I say, um, not as many calls as I would have expected myself. <laughs> well, look, we've, we're at least pleased to hear that you aren't being uh, inundated there, and maybe that some of us further south just need to harden up, Mike. <laughs> uh, I won't say that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I bet you want to. Mike List <laughs> there, of course, is the uh, Whangarei Fire Service Area Commander. Thanks for your time. Good luck for you people up there overnight. OK, thanks, Mark. Cheers. Hi, I'm here weather analyst Philip Duncan. We've got a lot of wind and rain on the way if you live in the North Island this week. South Island, you've got a bit of everything really being thrown at you. Let's have a look at the satellite imagery. We'll take a look at the satellite maps in motion. Here is the main system. This is the subtropical low. Look how it pulls down all that rich subtropical air. And uh, as the brighter and whiter the clouds are, 
usually the heavier the rain is. So we're seeing a lot of uh, a rain associated with this system. There are rain warnings in force for a number of places. It's slow movement is really the main reason. The actual area of rain isn't particularly huge, but it's slow moving as it runs into a high that is basically lying around this area here. You see this front coming into the South Island. Look how it disintegrates as it goes into that high. So the high pressure over the South Island, lower pressure over the North Island. Let's switch on the uh, rain mats, have a better look at what's going on. And you can see here that high coming in. The front that uh, tried to go up the South Island fizzled. This is the leftovers of it. Here is the low itself, the subtropical one. It's a wee bit deeper than what we thought it would be when we last checked in on Friday. The rain coming in here with a strong easterly. And those winds are only going to strengthen as it goes between the central part of the low here and uh, the higher air pressure that you can see out here. So the winds are going to build as this system moves on in. Let's go and have a close up look at Tuesday now for the North Island. Here is the low at lunchtime. It's just starting to drift in towards the Bay of Islands and Northland. That means the winds, they'll be strong from the east. Some areas it might be a little more southeast, others it might be a little more northeast. It depends on where you are. But overall, the easterly flow comes in through here. The rain clouds itself, they, they break apart a fair bit on Tuesday, so I don't think we'll see quite so, uh, so much widespread rain. But there will be rain and showers across a lot of the country, a lot of cloud as well, with these strong winds uh, zipping on through. In the South Island, it's uh, a different story. We've got the high centered here, and uh, the wind flow around it, of course, is the uh, easterly flow and the high anticyclonic. So the winds come in here and they just sort of gently slow down as they move down towards the country. So you'll have a light nor'easter, some cloud, maybe a bit of drizzle in there as well. And, uh, and then the further south you go, the better the weather will be. So there's um, some good news for you if you live in uh, the lower part of the South Island. All right, on Wednesday, things start to get messy again. The high drifts on, continues its movement to the east. The low doesn't move at all. It's still centered here around Northland. The heavy rain comes back. It basically pulls down some warm tropical air. And as it does that, the wind flow turns more northeast. So it gets warmer, more humid, and uh, that heavy rain returns probably later on Wednesday and into Thursday morning. South Island still looking fairly settled, but those nor'easters continue if you live in Canterbury. On Thursday, the low starts to finally fall apart. It pushes across the country. The winds, well, they're still strong over the North Island, but now they're coming in from the northwest, not the northeast. So you've got a northwest change, and as we go to Friday, uh, it basically dies out completely ahead of the next system. This is more of a South Island one, mainly for Southland and the West Coast, and then it'll move into the North Island's West Coast around about Saturday or Sunday, and this is the next low. Big low coming in, strong winds, strong to gale force nor'westers, sunny and hot for some areas, and then followed by a cold showery change. So autumn is definitely here. You can see all of our weather maps at weatherwatch.co.nz. That's all from me. Have a great week.